Yeah, but if you, know, you tell people to live beneath their means and save and save and save, I mean, what's the end point? They, let's say, okay, they're 65, now they want to retire. But mm-hmm. now it's like, okay, well, still don't splurge. Still be careful because you get to shepherd your money for the rest of your life and make sure it lasts. Yeah. I don't know, if, um, you know, when when did people get to relax and spend what they were? Yeah, for sure. For most people? It's, it's an interesting one because I definitely agree. I subscribe to the mentality that obviously you, you need to live your life and you need to enjoy experiences and, and spend money as needed. I think there is balance to be struck when you're working. And I think that sacrifices naturally do have to be made if you want to live the retirement that many people do and for many people that will just be maintaining their standard of living from pre to post retirement in terms of like when you know you kind of get to take a break from the investing and taking your cash and enjoying it and stuff like that it really comes down to the person i mean i would be of the mentality that if at all possible you should continue your your investing journey all the way through your retirement and yes you can obviously draw down your retirement fund and enjoy it and things like that but if you're getting into things like estate planning and figuring out if you want to like leave a sizable sum of money to your children or your spouse or whatever like or things like that i think the considerations around investments in retirement still become relevant throughout life i don't think it's a case of okay i'm gonna invest until i'm 60 and then i'm done and then happy days and I'll live off of my retirement fund because for a lot of people if you're not invested through retirement you're probably going to run out of money if you're not careful so having it stayed invested in the stock market or wherever it would be bonds cash uh, at least then you're getting some amount of growth and you can kind of maintain the value of your fund over time okay. any other hot topics that you have to address or you want to address or you think it's important to address on your channels? The two p- biggest pieces of advice I always give on the channel is because I'm, investing is kind of the, the core topic that I cover. It, it's really the premise of the channel. People always ask me, you know, where do I start? And a lot of the time they're like, oh, you know, I have this amount of money in a bank account and I'm looking at this, this and this. And, you know, the one thing I always say is if you can maximize your investments into your retirement fund and get all of the great tax benefits that obviously vary from country to country, you know, if you can maximize that, that and then after you do that, if you still have money left over, then and you can kind of look into investing in ETFs and index funds in your own personal retirement, you know, your own personal investment portfolio. So, you know, that's really the core piece of investing advice that I would give. In terms of other kind of hot topics, I mean, look, we could talk about that. I know housing and mortgages, things like that is a very important topic on my channel, but it varies so much from country to country because the, the housing market here is completely different to, to where it would be in the US or Canada or even across the water. So yeah, it, it certainly varies, but there's a lot of interesting topics there. What about for employed people or entrepreneurs, you know, solo or one ks or or other instruments they'd have over in Europe? Are there many of those? Do you discuss them? Yeah, I suppose it, we're, we're kind of envious of the 401k um, over here in Ireland because our, our retirement system is, is much less developed and you have much less options than you guys do over in the States. For self-employed people, fortunately, there are some good tax advantages associated with retirement funding. For example, over here, you can contribute a lot of money out of your business into your pension fund for the benefit of the business owner and you can pretty much avoid paying tax that way. Obviously, the drawback is that once the money goes into the pension, it can't be accessed until at least age 50 but it allows the entrepreneur to avoid any kind of income taxes or corporate taxes that they may have to pay on the money um, by contributing to a pension so that's definitely a, a positive that exists over here but yeah pensions are definitely an important vehicle for, for self-employed and, and entrepreneurs I think as well you know the, the actual tax benefits and correctly structuring your company as an entrepreneur is something that I get asked about quite a lot because you have a lot of people who will get involved in a co-founding or founding position and um, they'll do quite well in the business and then they'll go to exit and then they'll realize oh i didn't set up the company correctly or i didn't do the most tax efficient structure and then we'll end up with a nice large tax bill at the end so yeah it's uh kind of trying to traverse the waters of entrepreneurship in the most tax efficient way possible is uh, also an interesting topic all right well very good uh, daniel uh, what's the name of your channel where can people find out more about your work your channel where can they find you yeah, so I'm just at Manal Financial everywhere. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook as well. I am, as I said, on YouTube, I do primarily long form content. And then on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, I would do short form content. So kind of your 30 to 60 second bite sized information. So yeah, if, if anyone out there is, is looking for some primarily European focused financial discussions, then check me out. Um, I do tend to make some US based content, but not a whole lot because there's a lot of great guys over there doing that already. So yeah, I try to cater to my European audience.